So in my last video I showed you how amazing and beautiful this desk PC I built is. But of course not everything went that smoothly in the building process and not everything looks perfectly beautiful right now. So here's the bad and the ugly about my DIY custom desk PC. So first of all, if you haven't seen the actual main video, I encourage you to check it out. It's gonna be the first link down in the description. And there you can see all the beautiful parts of this vertical desk PC. Now, I started this project quite a long time ago. It has been like half a year already. And in the beginning, it was only like a vague idea I had a uh, simple sketch model of it in Cinema 4D, but I didn't, the model wasn't precise at all, it did, wasn't very detailed, it just was kind of to envision and what direction I want to go in. Then I went on to build it and went on and on, created multiple videos and like at some point I got to where I put in in this room and started using it as my main setup. Then things started to slow down a bit because I wasn't waiting on it anymore and using a temporary setup but actually using it. So my need to finish it wasn't that big anymore. So the last couple of, couple of things they took quite a while to complete. Now here are some shots of behind the monitor section. Now, from the shot where I'm talking to you right now, it looks perfectly fine, you can't see anything. And that's what I see when I'm sitting in the monitor as well. So I'm very happy with that. And back here you can just kinda see how everything is mounted up with this brace, cross brace that I mounted to the walls and the monitor mounted is mounted to this piece. I also have set up my microphone back there and I can pull it out. But while it is nicely hidden, if I'm not using it, when I'm using it, it blocks my view of the monitor quite a bit and I have to sit either a bit weird or have the, mo the microphone in a uh, not ideal position. So that's not really too comfortable. Also, my peripheral setup really wasn't done like this. 100% by choice. Now, I just knew that I wanted a lot of peripherals, like I want the drawing tablet always on the desk so I don't have to take it out and deal with wires. I want to have the keyboard, I want to have the keypad besides it for when I'm editing where I have all my macros on there and enough space for my mouse as well. So I ha really have a lot of peripherals that I want to fit on there. Now, it's a big desk, so that's not a problem, but the way I kind of have it set up, it really looks kind of full. Your And your arms are always sitting on the Wacom tablet, which does work fine as a, a palm rest, but it is just a bit too small to cover the full width of the keyboard. So it is kind of an awkward thing. But when I'm using it, the drawing tablet, it is in a good position. Um, the keyboard is usable as well, so it isn't too bad, but it could look better. Now, what really is kind of a problem are the, is the reclaimed wood. Now, of course reclaimed wood isn't even. Now, that's the, the whole point. It looks rough and rustic, and that really does look cool. I like it. Some people may don't like it, but I do. But what is a pain in the butt is the mouse pad isn't flat because the wood underneath is very bumpy and curved. So when I just place the mouse pad on there, the mouse will go just like the wood underneath. And that is okay if you're just web browsing, but really annoying if you're doing any more mouse intensive things like gaming. Now, I'm not a huge gamer, so that isn't too big of a deal. If you would be a gamer, you would have to use either a hard mouse pad or some other contraption. Now, the way I kind of 
mitigated this problem is I put a very thin aluminum sheet under the portion where my mouse pad is, like where I'm mousing. So if I take this apart up to the side, you can see I have a plate right here where I use the mouse mostly. And this plate there improves the experience. The dip isn't quite as bad, but the area isn't too big. I can't make it bigger though, because then it would interfere with other th things. So that's a big of a bit of a trade-off. Now, of course, cable management with such a behemoth like this desk with this two PCs in it and monitors and a lot of peripherals, it's gonna be a challenge. Now, I tried my best at cable managing and from the outside you can't see many cables. But while I also spent quite a few hours cable managing the backside, it still looks kind of messy, but I guess that's just the nature of something like that. But what I'm not really happy with are the headphone wires. Now, that's a problem you can't really erase without going wireless on your headphones. And I already own these two headphones and I don't want to buy new headphones anytime soon. So wireless isn't an option. First, I just had the cables running across the desk, then drooping back, drooping down in the rear and coming in the front again to plug in to my Scarlett 2i2. Now, shortly before I shot the video, I routed the cable to the Scarlett 2i2 from the back so that the cable isn't laying in the front, which makes it look a lot cleaner and cleaner. But it has the problem that I can't easily switch between my two headphones because I can only have one plugged in. But the problem that is still there is the cable going across the desk and down back there. And when I'm not using the headphones, I push the cable back over the desk so it isn't laying on the desk too big but then the cable drips down behind the desk and if you look from the right angle you can see it f f drooping down behind the desk and that isn't ideal. Now I tried to minimize this by putting a signum right there where you can kind of land on but this makes it hard to, to push it back down and it doesn't always work. So. If you have some genius idea how to manage the headphone cables, please leave it down below and I will consider it. But for now, I guess that's the best I'm gonna have to can do. But, but what I'm maybe gonna attempt in the future is make a switcher where I can flick a switch to switch between my two headphones. That shouldn't be too difficult of a project and would allow me to use my both of my headphones easily. And when we are talking already of this front plate here, where the I.O. and the reservoir are, it isn't ideal. Now, it works many purposes. It is quite easy to remove and it hides all the cables that are back there. It holds all, all the I.O. It gives me a space to put like the router and the switch and power strips without making a huge bulk under the desk helping with the cable management as well, but the seam between these two boards isn't really that good in real life. It shows up quite a lot nicer on camera. Um, I can't close it down fully because I have to open the front panel every once in a while to like change some things there, plug something else in, reset the router or whatever it may be. So. I can't fully remove it or fully fix it. One idea I had was maybe to add an aluminum strip to cover up this gap that I can just easily put on there and hide the seam. But I don't know how well it's gonna look. Maybe I'm gonna try it. Or if you have another idea, leave it down in the comments. Also, just a fun fact, I actually have never hooked up the front four fans for the radiator in the front. Now, originally it was just because 
I didn't have the right splitter and the motherboard PVM didn't work with the one I had. And then I was too lazy to get one and the temps were already really low with just the one radiator with the fans spinning really low. So I never ended up plugging them in. So the fans are just sitting there, not moving any air. But I have so much radiator space that that's no big deal and I still have temps in the 40s. So if you still have some questions about this desk PC, you can leave them down in the comments and I will answer them. Now that's it for this video. If you liked it, please leave a like down below and also consider to subscribe. You can also check out my store where I st sell phone dogs and soon maybe some other stuff as well. And there's also the link to my website and social media down below. Thanks for watching and until next time.